Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Welcome to the inaugural episode of the Solo Leveling Hunters Association Report, or SHARP for short. I'm Sam Prism, your host for today's journey into the heart of solo leveling Arise. Since we've just celebrated our global launch, today's focus will be on the early game progression, because we don't want to spoil anything for you. The first adventure you'll embark on in solo leveling Arise is the immersive story mode. As Sung jin you'll navigate through the narrative inspired by the webtoon, experiencing his journey firsthand. Upon completing chapters, you'll unlock side chapters, offering insights into the tales of hunters other than Sung jin directly drawn from the webtoon. When you go through these, there are things called battle missions, as you can see here. Beating a story mode stage for the first time and accomplishing the battle missions rewards you with a crucial resource known as Essence Stones. Essence Stones can be used to acquire more hunters at the draw or to purchase plenty of other resources. So if you're a completionist like me, it'll be worth the effort. Once you complete all stages in a chapter, you get two custom draw tickets, as you can see on the top here, and same with finishing all the battle missions. So this is one of the simplest strategies to accumulate custom draw tickets in the early game. Keep in mind, you can attempt story mode as many times as you want, so keep on trying even if you fail. So here we are at the Hunter Preview. If you didn't know, this is where you can try out the new Hunters that recently came to the game, like Silvermane, Baek Be Yun, Yun Ho, and Choi Jung In. So, uh, since Shai Hae In is the newest Hunter, let's dive straight into her gameplay and see what her skills can do. All right, we look at the beautiful entrance animation, as we can see for the dancer. Let's first just show off some of her animations for her basic attack. I personally really enjoy the artwork and animations of the sword. Her first skill is called the dancer, and if it happens to crit, then it, it triggers an effect called Wealth of the Blade. And so what that does is for the next three seconds, you can repeatedly use the dancer as many times as you can. So let's see what it looks like. You also have a chance to brand the target as well, which was very helpful. And you also get a dancer effect as well. For the second one, it's called Sword of Light. And you make it so that, again, you apply that unrecoverable effect. So you can see him recovering. And once I use it, no longer recovering. He also, it also does more damage if the enemy is branded. So we're gonna go ahead and go through this, defeat the monster as quick as we can. Again, all out looking at the animations. And so this is going to be her ultimate skill. And this skill basically, if the enemy is branded, does more damage. So let's look at this. Yeah, it's just the art team did an amazing job with that. All right, so moving on, after a swift transition, we will dive straight into the Gates content. So we load in, uh, loaded in here onto the Gates content. Upon entering the mode, you'll encounter various types of Gates spanning from rank E to S, with the higher difficulty giving you better rewards, of course. There are five types of Gates, Normal, Dungeon Ranks, Red, Special, and Bonus Gates. Normal Gates are the most basic type of Gate, where raid parties engage in combat to defeat the monsters and bosses within. Depending on the Gate, you can form a party with or without Sung jin -woo. Regardless of the participants, you can get artifacts, gold, shadow enhancement materials, mark of time for a rank gates or higher, weapon enhancement gear, and artifact enhancement chips from the normal gates. You also get to encounter dungeon breaks once you reach gate difficulty 5. When the monsters and bosses escape, it's up to you to save the day and you will be rewarded with various rewards including artifacts, gold, shadow enhancement materials, mark of time for A rank gates or higher, and most importantly, weapon limit break materials. Keep in mind, dungeon breaks can only be attempted using a party with Sung jin -woo. But once you unlock chapter seven in story mode, you'll start encountering red gates. Red gates tend to be tougher and take longer to clear than regular gates. Clearing them allows you to obtain more valuable resources. And what makes it different is you also get player skill scrolls and rune fragments. These rune fragments are crucial for crafting skill runes, making red gates incredibly important to do. By clearing the red gate using a party without Sung jin -woo, you can acquire hunter skill scrolls and elixir. Elixirs are precious materials used to upgrade hunters. You don't want to miss out on these red gates, I'm telling you. There is also special gates, which is quite different from all the other gates where hunters will face unique objectives such as demolishing treasure chests or defeating waves of non-aggressive gold-carrying goblins. So why don't I just show you how different the special gates are. 
And as you can see, it is going to be one of the treasure chest ones. So lucky for me, I won't have to be stressed out chasing a bunch of goblins. I can just have a punching bag of treasure chests instead. And I'll just have a basic set of our SR wonderful supports. All right. So now, again, you have three minutes. You have a lot of time. We just have the basic equipment here. All you got to do, spam your abilities. Have a good time with it. So that makes sure we got to weave in our thing, our support skills here. So I think that's one down. Yep, that's one down. We're almost there. And then there's the last one. Last one is right here in front of us. So what I like really like about Parkeesian skill is that you get some ult ability from it as well as the AoE. But there we go. Easy, nice, simple treasure chest, punching bag really. Um, and I'm sure as most of you know, if you've been playing solo level, leveling rise since launch, you can never have too much gold. Please keep in mind that you require a gate key to clear any gate and these keys recharge on a daily basis. So be sure to utilize all of your gate keys every day and select the gates that best suit your needs. Also, if you're not happy with the available gates, you can rescan to search for new ones using this feature at the bottom. You can also choose difficulty settings. So if you're not feeling like you want to really challenge yourself that day, maybe you can go it down a little bit or you can go up higher. All right. And so if I click rescan here, you'll see that the everything will open up again. Please note that these red gates will remain after you rescan. The red gate will keep appearing as long as you rescan it until you defeat it. So right here, if you go to the gate mining, uh, you can see that you can dispatch. Which when you clear a gate, you can dispatch your, your mining team to gather mana crystals and essence stones. You can, and so right here, this one, the C ring thing is done. So you can see that we just got some mana crystals and some gold. In Encore missions, a party of hunters without Sung Janu will face off against familiar bosses that you've already encountered in story mode. Kind of like what would happen if Sung Janu wasn't there to beat the bosses? Who would then beat them? Encore missions are where you will acquire high quality artifacts. Currently, there are four bosses. Blue Venom Fang Kasaka and Viridescent Mage 4s drop Black Lion, Holy, New Hunters, and Hard Leather artifacts. However, Kasaka drops gloves and boots, while Fours drops helmets and armors, so it is necessary to clear both bosses to complete the equipment set. As Cerberus, the Gatekeeper of Hell, and the Giant Arachnid become available later on, they also drop Black Lion, Holy, New Hunters, and Hard Leather artifacts, but they also start dropping Dragon Knights, High Ranking Demons, Almighty Cargalgans, and Palace Guard artifacts, each with unique set, set effects. The next item on the agenda for the Grand Launch Sharp livestream is exploring the battlefield of time. So Battlefield of Time is a time attack mode where hunters must swiftly dispatch magic beasts and compete against other hunters to achieve the best clear time. Battlefield of Time runs in seasons and each season will feature a different boss. So you can see the, the season's boss, the first one here is Al the Almighty Shaman Kargalgan. If you haven't tried it out yet, go ahead and this will unlock around chapter 10. And so you can see here, this is the overall rank and you'll be able to get the overall ranking rewards based on how well you do. Next on, let's move to the challenge, the Battlefield of Time challenge, which incorporates the rule of the week. As the name implies, these rules will change on a weekly basis. It can involve challenges like extra 20% HP, like you can see on the left here, or defense, or enemies resistance to break condition increases as well. You can only challenge this mode with hunters only, not with Sung Jinu. Clearing each tier grants clear rewards in addition to overall rank, group rank, and achievement rewards as you can see here. Overall rankings are based on the clear time of each boss and rewards will be distributed according to the rank at the end of the season. Group rank reward is determined by your rank within a group of 100 people. And lastly, achievement rewards are granted as soon as the clear conditions are met. So as you can see here, 10 minutes, all the way down to seven minutes and you would get all of these rewards if you got under seven minutes, which would be very impressive. We have a national level hunter competition between streamers from North America, Japan, and Korea live right now. Our NA representatives are Nimune, Asian Guy Stream, and Boxbox. So be sure to check out their runs and give them your support. 
NA streamers will be running their final attempt on May 16th, so stay tuned and show support for our NA streamers. If you ever feel lost, make sure you check out the Challenges tab. Challenges provide a walkthrough of various functions to help hunters learn the game, and I know it helped me a lot understand what I need to be doing in the prog to progress in the game. So make sure you go through these, it's super helpful, and you don't want to miss out on the 10 custom draw tickets you receive for clearing each challenge chapter like you see on the left. Not to mention, there's also enticing mission rewards as well, such as in chapter 9 I believe, you can see here, and you get an SSR Sung Junu weapon. So it's definitely worth, worth, definitely worth your time. Thanks everyone for sticking around. A few things before we go. Be sure to follow our social media channels in the social tag as we hold regular events with rewards. We currently have a caption event going on right now. Well, that about wraps up the Sharp Grand Launch live stream. I hope everyone is enjoying Soul Leveling Arise to its fullest. And I know fans have been waiting for this game much like we have. And I sincerely hope that the game has been fulfilling your expectations. Goodbye, everyone. Stay sharp and level up. Rise. Play now.